Welcome to the Healthy and Wealthy and Wise podcast with global sales trainer and professional speaker, Lois Kofi. Each week, it is her goal to share inspiration and education for you to be, do, have the best health and wealth and wisdom for your life. Well, all right, all right, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Uh, I am Lois Kofi, your host of another Healthy and Wealthy and Wise special episode. I do these from time to time, you guys, where we don't do our normal show time. So I know people are probably like, what? What's going on? So just wanted to reiterate, um, today's a special episode because I have my friend Jake Valentine. Did I say that right, Jake? I said that right? No. Oh no! <laughs> it's actually Jake Ballantini. Ah. No, I'm just kidding. Valentine is the, <laughs> Valentine like the holiday, like Valentine but with a B. Uh, Valentine like the beer that used to be on the wall at Yankee Stadium. Valentine beer. Wow, I don't think I knew no that. relation though. That's awesome. Well, thank you for letting me um, pronounce your name wrong. And uh, that's all right. You for being here today. I just want to give a little bit of props and a little bit of background. I met Jake actually through his amazing Facebook community. Uh, and I was blown away because uh, it's filled with amazing heart centered speakers, authors, coaches. I, I, I thought, is it there like over 13,000 now? Is it, is it 13? Uh, not quite. We're at 11, 11 okay. and a half thousand. Okay. That's amazing. And so anyway, um, people from all over the globe, uh, there, I see a lot of value and I know that Jake actually coaches on this. Um, and he has been an award-winning motivational speaker. He has his own mountaintop podcast or t- mountaintop motivation, sorry, rather podcast. And we're going to be talking today a little bit later about his upcoming webinar that I'm going to be hosting um, because there's so many people who are struggling with this space of Facebook and groups and fan pages and all of the things like, what do we do? Getting to clients do and doing all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So Jake, I'd love for you to share your story and, and maybe give us a, uh, if you have a short synopsis of how the heck did you grow such an amazing group to such a big size? Well, well, first let's take a step back to, to get why I got into this, like why I started this, what I was doing. And I was on the road, uh, four to five days a week, nine months out of the year. And I, I enjoy, I love speaking. I love speaking and it was so much fun and there's so many good things. Um, but then I found out that there was one thing that I cared about more than being on stage speaking. And that was that my son was coming into the world. And I didn't want to be an absentee father. I wanted to be there. I wanted to be present. I wanted to be the kind of dad, the kind of dad that I had. I was very blessed to have a wonderful dad that that was there for me. And I said, okay, I got to change something. And I looked into a lot of different things of what I could do to um, monetize what I was doing, getting off the stage. Mm -hmm. And so many people had asked me of How on earth have you been able to do this? And I thought, you know what? I'm going to put this together into a Facebook group. And and I thought I'm going to create something that I wish existed, a group of people that I can be peers with and connections with. And I didn't know what it was going to turn into at the time. I just knew that I wanted to create something um, that would have that kind of peer group feeling and that I knew would come back to me at some point. And I didn't know exactly how it would turn out. But very quickly and very rapidly, it didn't even require to be at the point of having thousands and thousands and thousands of of members. You know, by the time I was right around 500 members is when I reached my first $10,000 a month in terms of coaching clients. And because it came from understanding that it's not about numbers, it's not about having massive numbers, it's about understanding what to do with those people, how to make them feel Uh, connected to you, how to get that know, like, and trust with them and how to turn those people into clients. And so that, that's what I really focus on today. At the beginning, it was helping people to be able to build their speaking business and that kind of thing. And I, I love doing that still, but the thing that's most interesting to me is you can be speaking every day inside of your Facebook group. You can be sharing your message every day inside of your Facebook group, and you can be bringing people to you that you can be helping on a daily basis that are willing to pay you handsomely to do that. That's so awesome. And I, I, I forgive me, I don't think you said, what year did you start that Facebook group? Um, it was the end of 2017. That's so it was awesome. the end of 2017. I'd say it really got cooking in, in 2018 is when it really got cooking. 
I love it. Well, I'd love to hear more about, you know, uh, if any, any coaching advice, any tips that you have. I know we're going to be talking about your webinar. Um, that's going to be where they're going to want to be taking copious notes. Uh, but what, what do you think is the key to creating, a, is it like a curriculum or a posting schedule or any, any tidbits you have for that on making a group valuable? So when it comes to making a group valuable, yeah, you can have posting schedules, you can have, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But ultimately I look at it this way. If we act like humans, instead of acting like business people, you know, really great things happen. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk talks about marketing to people, uh, how many people market in a way that they don't consume and how backwards that is. So start off by looking at like, okay, when you're in a Facebook group, what are the groups that you like being a part of and why? Because this is the secret that most people don't understand. A Facebook group is actually a very bad place to sell stuff. Uh, a Facebook group is not a good sales channel. And I know that sounds backwards, but the thing is, is that if you're only trying to sell, sell, sell inside of your Facebook group, you're having diminishing returns. The Facebook group is a wonderful tool for building connection, for building no like, and trust, for building that uh, feeling of this is the person that I want to learn from. And what I do with my clients is help them to be able to take the group, make it be something that people truly want to be a part of, make it feel like a community as opposed to a place where they're just being marketed to. And then your goal is to get them off of the platform onto a webinar, off of the platform, onto a, a free opt-in tool on your email list, off of the platform, onto a free call with you, you know, different things, whether it's one-to-one -one or it's one-to-many in those other places, depending on what you're selling, depending on, you know, price point. If it's a higher ticket offer, it's probably going to be a one-on-one -on -one setting. If it's a lower price uh, offer as the front end, well, you can do that on a webinar or even a lower price through an email, uh, email sequence. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is that your goal with the Facebook group is not to make sales. Your goal with the Facebook group is to build a community and to build know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. Then your only call to actions are not to buy things. It's to get them off of the Facebook group into channels that are more fit mm -hmm. for sales. Most people don't like sales calls, but the reason why they don't like sales calls is because Sales 101 says what? We got to build rapport at the beginning of the call. That's the whole idea, build rapport. But what if you lived in a world where you didn't need to build rapport because they were so excited to talk to you? I don't need to build rapport on that call because they already know me. They already like me. They already trust me. And it feels like you're talking to old friends. And when you get into that situation, it's, it's night and day. It's a night and day experience where so many coaches, they get started and they take some, some coaching program that tells them, oh, we're going to get you 20 sales calls a month. And how are they doing that? They're doing that with cold, cold messaging to people that don't even know them. And it's super awkward. You get on that call. I remember one time I was following one of these, one of these uh, cold messaging approaches from a coaching course I was taking. And I, I did the, I did the, the, the sequence they told me to do, send the message, you know, send it to this many people, get them on the call, do that kind of thing. And then he also had a sales script. And I remember I felt so embarrassed. The first question was, okay. So they said, well, you, you, you need to come off as the expert. So you asked them at the beginning, what, why are you on this call? And this was, well, I'm on this call because I want this and I want, at least that's how it worked in the, in the module that I watched. And time after time, I would ask that stupid question at the beginning and people would say, uh, I don't know. Cause you, you told me to, you asked me on this call and it was clear they didn't have any interest in me. They didn't see me as an expert. They were saying yes, because look, if you message a hundred people, about getting on a call with you to help them with whatever, you're going to get five people who feel sorry for you, who will eventually say, sure, why not? And you're going to spend so much time. And then I, everything changed for me when I went, no, forget this. I need to focus on building real relationships with people, providing valuable content, creating a real community and making it so people actually want to come to me 
instead of me chasing them. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. It, it sounds like you're talking about attraction marketing, essentially becoming an influencer, good old uh, Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people so that they already fall in love with you. And then they they're demanding for a sales call, right? It sounds like, is that how you got to your first 10 K month with those 500 people? Can you walk us through that? Maybe a little, if you remember, it's been a while, but totally. So really, really when it came down to it, you got to look at it this way. It's not like people are just knocking down the door saying, I want to work with you. I want to work with you. I want to work with you. But what ends up happening is when you build that real know, like, and trust, one of the things that I do, you, know, you said was posting schedules, all that kind of thing. Yes, posting schedules are important. Mm -hmm. I look at it more like posting philosophy is important. Mm -hmm. You have to have a variety of what you're doing. If all you're doing is asking all the time, you're going to get a lot of people saying nothing. You're going to get a lot of nothing. You're going to get a lot of zero response. Even if all you're doing all the time is educating, you're not going to get a lot of response mm -hmm. because people eventually get tired of it. We need to have a variety, the education so that people see us as an expert, showing up as a fun human so that people see us as a person, you know, creating opportunities for discussions so that people actually get engaged. And we also have to have those asking posts so that people, what I say, raise their hand and say, I'm interested in more. So that's mm -hmm. the, the whole purpose of the Facebook group is to build the know, like, and trust variety of content and all the asking posts, all of the call to action posts, you could call them. Mm -hmm. They are only designed to get people to self-identify as I'm interested in more. Hey, look at me. I'm interested in more. I would like to know more about what you have to offer. And then those are the people that I then focus on offline. So mm -hmm. those are the people that I then focus on creating that relationship with on Messenger, getting them onto a phone call, talking to them about what's going on. But it saves so much time and makes it so much more effective when you're actually talking to people who are interested in you. So number one, what to do. Let's say you're, you're creating that group from scratch. The first thing to do is to start off with who is this group for and who is it for and what are you going to help them with? So creating a group from the beginning, that's all about that. Understanding who this is for, what you're helping them, helping them with, and get focused on that. Once you go in there and you create that group, I advise that people start off with their, what I call their founding members. So rather than inviting everyone you know, which I think is a bad idea, which a lot of people just go, oh, I'm going to invite everyone I know. Right. Well, it's a bad idea because you get a lot of people joining who are just feel sorry for you or just feel like, sure, I want to support. And that's it. I don't want supporters. I want the actual right people. And the reason why is if you get 30 to 40 people, like that's all you need is 30 to 40 people to come into the group at the beginning who are the actual ideal client. And you're going to give them value as if they paid a thousand dollars to be in this group. So you're going to pretend they just bought a thousand dollar course. And I'm going to give them value as if they joined a thousand dollar program. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because these founding members are going to be the basis of your, uh, they're going to be the basis of, of your culture inside of that group. Mm. They're going to love it. And they're going to be your, they're going to be your beacons of light that are going to go out and start sharing it. They're going to start telling people about it. As mm. you start focusing on the growth strategies to bring people in. The other thing is, is let's say you got 300 random people to join the group overnight. And if those 300 people join the group, you have zero control over the culture of that group, no control whatsoever. Yeah. But if you bring people in, you have 30 to 40 people and over three to four weeks, you're giving a massive amounts of value. They go, wow, I'm so excited to be a part of this. I love this. And they, you build a culture there when new people come in, People tend to get in line. I don't, I don't mean to sound negative about that, but what people do for the most part is they, um, they comply with the culture of w the room that they're in. So if you go into a room and everyone, let's just pretend we're in a live room at a seminar. You go to that room and everyone's quiet with a notebook out sitting in their seat. What are you going to do? Most people are going to go in, be quiet, sit in the seat, pull out their notebook. Yeah. You go to a Tony Robbins event where you show up 
and it's a it's a dance party and there's like rave lights going on and a crazy dance party you're gonna show up and be like okay well that's that's what we're doing here that's what we're doing here we're doing something here so you want to start out with the culture of this group now mm -hmm. you focus on growing that group we can talk about you know maybe maybe after this we can talk about ways to grow it but you focus on growing that group so that the people coming in are the right fit they, mm -hmm. they fit in they act the way that you want them to act or they leave because they go oh this isn't for me i'm out of here great i want them to leave mm -hmm. but as you're growing the group the focus has to be i'm here to give service i'm here to give value mm -hmm. that i'm here to have a real community and i'm going to have calls to action that get them off of the Facebook group off of the Facebook platform to either be on a call, to be on a webinar. Those are the two biggest ones, call or webinar, call or Zoom call, uh, individual call or group Zoom call. And those are the two best ways to then take them to whatever offerings you have for them. And I like to keep it that simple, just going from, am I going to focus on getting them on a one-on-one -on -one call or am I going to focus on getting them to a group call? And as you do that, that's where the the money comes in. And that's exactly what I did for me. It was once I had about 300 people in there, I started doing regular Zoom calls, regular group Zoom calls. They'd come mm -hmm. to the group Zoom call. My only call to action on the Zoom call was a free one-on-one -on -one call with me. And I was mm -hmm. able to sell them into a one-on-one -on -one or a group coaching program, depending on where they were at. Mm -hmm. And it was before I knew it. Before I knew it, I was like, okay, cool. Like it's making over $10,000. It just grew and grew and grew since then. And it was with those simple strategies. And anyone, anyone who's watching this, who's a coach can do this. The only tools you need, all you need is a Facebook group. You need a Zoom account. And that's about it. You can build a calendar app. You need a calendar app as well. Mm -hmm. And if you have those three things, there's no reason. There's nothing holding you back from really making significant money helping people. I love it. I love it. And how did you come to decide on the name? I know that's a big deal. It's not quite like naming your, your child. <laughs> and you can change the name, right? Did you start out with the speakers, authors, and coaches network? I did. And for me, the reason why was because I went, okay, what would I like to be a part of? You know, I went to lots of events. You know, I, I had been a professional speaker for, you know, seven years before starting this. So it's it, full-time professional speaker for seven years. So it's not like I was brand new in the market or anything like that. And I'd gone to so many events. And I remember I was sitting in the back of the room at a conference that was you know, really, really for beginners and it, nothing wrong with that, but that's what the conference was for. And I was sitting in the back of the room uh, with a friend of mine, his name is Blake Brandis. And as we were sitting in the back of the room, we we're like, you know what? I, I wish there was like a a network for people that were like us, a network for people that were like us, that were professionals in the industry. And at the beginning, it started out as, I just want to create a network of like my peers. That's how it started. It's shifted since then. We focus a lot on education and that kind of thing now. But at the beginning, that that was purely it was, I just want to create a network for my peers so we can connect and support each other. And I think a lot of it had to do with pure intent it grew very quickly because my intent was I want to create a network where we can support each other. Mm -hmm. Well, before long, people who are brand new said, well, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of that. I want to learn what you're doing. I want to be a part of that. But the, the like, here's the deal. If your Facebook group is called the Jake Ballantyne fan club, it's a bad idea. Well, first of all, you're not Jake Ballantyne. So that'd be really weird if you created a group <laughs> that was that. But I mean, like if, it, if it's a group that's like, your name. Yeah. Like, that's a bad idea for a group because why do I want to be a part of a group? That's a fan page. Now a fan page doesn't have the same kind of uh, abilities and things like that, but um, you want a group to where people can feel like they are a part of something. They are a part of a community. What does it mean to be a part of the Jake Ballantyne group? I don't know. I have no clue. Now, if you're famous, if you're already famous, um, you're probably not watching this, but if you're if you're already famous and have a massive following, then yeah, you can you can name your group after your name. But if you're not and you're trying to attract people, say I use a Facebook group as an attraction tool for top of the funnel new clients, new people 
getting to know who I am. And so you want to create something that's not about you. It's not about your brand. It's not about that. You want to create it in a way that people see it and they go, okay, I'm interested in that. I'd like to know more. I'd like to be a part of that. How can I find out more about it? I'm going to click join. Yeah, I loved it because I remember looking for peers. To your point, I was looking for other coaches because I was newer in the online space last year in the pandemic. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to learn from other people. So I think I, I think I searched the word coaches um, and that's how I found your group too. So I did discover, I made that mistake. I did my first Facebook group, which no longer exists. I had my name in it. I was like, that's no one, no one's searching for that. So I love the culture. Yeah the how you how you you know built that foundational um culture because you're absolutely right um you want to attract the right people and uh allow those that don't belong they they can always self-select and leave so that's yeah i want to i want to make one point earlier you said did you change the name you know how did you come on that you know it was successful quickly i want to be clear on something the speakers authors and coaches network has been a huge success However, it was the fourth group that I created. Failure, 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 success. I love it. Now, the reason why is there was things wrong with every one of those, mm. every one of those other groups. One of them was it was all about me. That was number one. The first group was all about me. Didn't work. Wah, wah. Failure. Failure. Lesson learned. That's a better way to look at it. Lesson learned. Don't make it about me. My yeah. second group I created, I went completely the opposite and made it all community, all giving, all, all about community kind of a feel with no direct return on investment and, and time is an investment as well. But there was no direct monetization in it. Granted, you can always find a way to monetize with, with anything, if you have a group of people, you can always find a way to monetize. But what I realized was, is that group was so focused on just the um, doing good in the world, the, the do-goodery, yeah. um, that it was going to be a long time before it turned into profit. Mm -hmm. Third group was about them and about a direct ROI with profit, but it was focused on a brand that I had built and a coaching program that I'd created. So nobody was searching for that. Nobody, nobody knew to be a part of it. So number one was all about me. Number two was all about the mission with no direct ROI. Uh, number three was all about my specific program. I thought, well, I should make it, you know, look at these. They all went pendulum. Boom, 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 boom. And then I went, no, I need to go in the middle where it's going to be something like, like, yeah, I say like, well, I created it because I wanted a peer group. I want, I knew all of that and that's all true. But I also knew that it, over the long period, I knew that I could turn this into a business if it grew in the right approach. So I said, okay, you know, look at things like, okay, you look at the National Speakers Association. Mm -hmm. I think NSA is a wonderful organization. However, most people who say I want to be a speaker actually don't want to be a keynote speaker. They think they do, but they don't because they'll say, I want to be a speaker and I want to talk about this to those people. You know, they'll, they'll say, here's the topic I want to speak to. Here's the people that I want to speak to. Or I want, here's the topic I want to speak about. Here's the people I want to, to talk to. And the truth is, is that with the national speakers association model is very much the model that I um, focused on the keynote speaker model that I did. That is only a model that works in a few select markets. Mm -hmm. It only works in a few select markets. If you say, you know what, I want to speak at personal development seminars. I want to talk on goal setting at personal development seminars. And I want a, a fee of $20,000. I go, great. Your, your focus needs to be becoming a well-known entity in the, in the market space, because mm -hmm. in that market, they're only paying speakers that are helping them sell tickets. Meaning mm -hmm. if I'm going to hire Gary Vaynerchuk for $200,000 to come and speak at my event. I know that having his name on the website is going to help me to sell at least $200,000 worth of tickets. Mm -hmm. That's what I know. They're not paying speakers for their content. They're paying speakers for their name value of bringing in people. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. corporations, associations, uh, education space, corporate mm-hmm. association, education space, whether that's K-12 or college, those are all markets that are paying speakers. It doesn't matter if you're famous. It matters is does your content, is your content going to help me with the problem I'm trying to solve with my people? That's what mm-hmm. matters. But if, mm-hmm. if you say, well, I, I want to speak to women entrepreneur groups and I want to get paid for it, not going to happen. It's not going to happen because that market doesn't have budgets. Someone right now is saying, well, it happened to me once. Well, great. It's not going to happen to you a hundred times a year in the way that you want to do it. So the reason why the speakers, authors, and coaches network was something I thought about is the modern speaker is not the 1990s speaker that here's how I speak. I fit into these boxes. The Mm -hmm. modern speaker is someone who can – most of the people, what they really want is, wow, I want to speak, but I also want to coach. I also want to have uh, back-end coaching programs and group courses, and I want to have books, and I want to have all that stuff. And you can do that with with the internet, with groups. With things. Now, there's a lot of tools. The tool that I love is using Facebook groups. You can do that by bypassing all of those other places by trying to fit yourself into some niche that you might not necessarily be passionate about. But even 10 years ago, that was your only option to be in the speaking world was to do one of those. So we live in this beautiful world where you can create your own thing. You can build your own market. It's just, it's just amazing. I love it. And I I know this is really just a a great intro to your webinar. So maybe I want to save all the good stuff for your webinar because I got, I got lots of questions, but I know you're going to, you're going to cover it there. Tell us about the August 24th. Uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, I do believe, is, is where we're going to be having that live training, guys. So that's where you'll also have Q&A. And I'm going to throw up the link on the, the screen here right now. I'll also put it in the show notes. If you guys want to go to groupsforcoaches.com forward slash training, what will they learn at that webinar? Yeah, absolutely. So groupsforcoaches.com slash training. Really what it comes down to is this is the story of how I built a $10,000 a month coaching business in less than three months, zero cold messages, zero dollars in ads. And it was through this tool of a Facebook group. We're going to cover three different things. The first one that we're going to talk about is how to find people that actually want to work with you and, you know, actually want to work with you. And and that's a huge thing. We got to be working with people that want to work with you instead of people that just don't care that have no interest. So we're looking for how do you find those people without the cold messages, without the ads, without those things. So how do we do that? Secondly, we're going to go, how's the fastest way to be seen as the go-to expert in your market? Because if you're, if you're building a coaching business and someone's going to be paying you somewhere between, let's say 200 and a thousand dollars an hour to talk to you, well, they need to see you as an expert. If they don't see you as an expert, it's not going to happen. So they have to see you as an expert. So what's the fastest way for you to be seen as an expert, no matter how new you are to the industry? So we have to understand that as well. And then number three, we're going to talk about a simple process that I use to bring people to me every single day. A simple process. I love simple. I love simple Let's keep things simple. So you use that simple process so that leads come to you on a daily basis. I love that. Can I ask a couple of, uh, and you don't have to answer them. We could say, nope, you got to come to the webinar. (laughs) Great. Nope. You got to come to the webinar. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That sounds great because I'm I'm excited to hear about your examples of, I just took notes here about your your call to action to the one-on-one call with you or the webinar option. Love that. Um, you know, and that, and that simple, I love simple and being able yes. to attract people. Um, and I love that you're not using bots. I mean, there's so many, so many automated things out there these days. I just heard it about another one that said, oh, hey, if you sign up, you can send 400 Facebook messages a day. And I'm just like, really? Um, I know that's not something that you're into and, and definitely something that uh, I, I feel like can be perceived as, as inauthentic. So if I don't know if you have totally. any other thoughts about that or want to share anymore, but I know we're, we're wrapping it up here. So, well, what, what you're talking about there, I'm, I'm not against any tool that's going to help you be more effective and efficient. 
I, it's just the use of those tools. So I'm, I'm not like, I'm not anti any tool um, that can help us be more effective and efficient. However, we got to use them in a way that is going to make us effective and efficient. And if it's not going to be effective and efficient, then that's not what we want to do. But with this, like, like, honestly, what I'm talking about here, this does not require us to be a huge person, a huge player in the market. We do not need to be massive. And that's such a cool thing. We don't have to be massive. All we need to do is to create something that people actually want to come and be a part of. Mm -hmm. And it's so much more simple than people think it is. And when you use these Facebook groups in a effective way, and that's what we're going to be talking about in the group. A lot of you might even said, look, I have a Facebook group. You might say, oh, been there, done that, tried it, did it, didn't work. Well, my question for you, this is something I refer to. I don't talk about Facebook groups. I talk about something I call an ideal client attraction group. That's what this is, is an ideal client attraction group. And if your group is not growing on a consistent basis, if you're not getting 20 to 30 new people joining your group every day, then it's not an ideal client attraction group. If your group is not filling your calendar with calls with potential clients uh, to the level that you want it to, it's not an ideal client attraction group. If your group is not filling webinars that you want to put on on a monthly basis, it's not an ideal client attraction group. There are things that are missing there. So I don't want someone to say, oh, I already did that. It didn't work because it's not just about the tool. It's about using the tool properly. Mm -hmm. I can swing a hammer, but it doesn't mean that I can build a house. Um, and, and so it's using a tool in a proper way. It's simple, but do not let the simplicity of the content that we're going to talk about fool you because a lot of times we want it to be harder than it is, but I decided a long time ago, I'm into simple, easy, fun, and effective. And that's all I'm looking for. And that's what, that's what I do. That's so great. Well, I love your energy. I love your group. Um, so guys, if you haven't already done so, and I know we have, um, we don't have our normal larger audience because it's not our normal live show time. I'm so sad, Jake, but I'm going to be blasting this out, sharing this everywhere and getting as many people. Um, and Sean is one of my one of my great friends and coaches from Princeville, Minnesota, also known as Minneapolis, if you didn't know where Prince oh. was. Uh, was very cool oh, oh, oh princeville yeah there you go <laughs> so guys um just a couple of things that I, i'm gonna close with my closing question that i ask everyone jake so guys first of all go to this this link right now groupsforcoaches.com forward slash training sign up for the august 24th and invite a coach invite a speaker and invite other people that you know that could benefit from learning how to monetize your facebook group in 90 days or even less. And, and while I know we have a lot of people here who maybe if you're watching this and you are a coach, I actually have my first ever virtual summit coming up. So I just wanted you guys to save the date and it's called Manifest and Monetize. So if you go to manifestandmonetize.com guys, um, please sign up. It's not till October. Uh, I know that Jake also has his own summit coming up here soon, but I, I thought this would be a great time to to save the date, let you guys know that's going to be an amazing event for coaches, speakers, and transformational healers and leaders out there in the marketplace. So um, as always, as we bring it to a close, Jake, thank you so much for, for spending some time with us today and giving us amazing wisdom. I'm looking forward to your webinar. I always close with the same question every guest. When you hear the phrase... Uh, healthy and wealthy and wise. What does that mean for you? I think that's everything. That's that's complete. That's uh, that's what we're really looking for. What are we really looking for in life? Health, uh, wealth, wisdom. That's what we want in life. I just look at that as a holistic approach to happiness in life. Uh, that that's my thought when you ask that question. I wasn't prepared for the thought, but in my mind, I just go happy, healthy, and wise. What does that mean? or healthy, wealthy, and wise. That's, that's what people are really after. So people are really after in life. And if you have one without the other, you're going to be off balance. And if you're off balance, it's not going to help you. A uh, little miniature version of a story. A couple of weeks ago, I had my tires changed. And as soon as I drove away, so weird. Every light you could imagine, every warning light you could imagine just started flashing on my, on my dashboard. I'm like, what the heck's going on? Immediately turned back around, went back. 
I said, what's wrong with my car? What'd you do to it? <laughs> and finally they, they get it. They start looking at it. And one of the people just starts laughing and then shaking his head. And he realizes that one of their new, uh, one of their new techs, he put on three matching tires and a fourth tire that was smaller than the other three. Oh. So my wheels were spinning in a different speed. They were spinning yeah. in a different speed. And what the guy said to me was, I'm so glad your car caught it and you came back right now because you were off balance for a little bit and that didn't do anything to your car. But if you kept going, you would have done serious damage to your car. Same thing in our life. If we only focus on one, a lot of people just focus mm -hmm. on their wealth. They don't focus on their health. They don't focus on wisdom. They don't focus on relationships. And when they do that, eventually their life gets out of balance. You could be the same thing, just focusing on any of these. It's about balance in life. So happy and healthy and, and wise, that's balance and completeness. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I always have to I always have to throw that out at the end. And, and whatever you say is always perfect. So thank you for including that story um, because it is like a three-legged stool for me and uh, why I picked that name has a lot of depth and meaning for me. So thanks for being an amazing special edition guest guys. If you saw value in this episode, whether you're watching it on YouTube, iTunes, iHeartRadio, here on Facebook, please hit the share button. Um, and especially if you haven't already, I know Sean said he's already registered, go to groupsforcoaches.com forward slash training. And until next time, guys, here's to your best health, your best wealth, and your best wisdom. Bye bye for now. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe, refer a friend, and please drop me a rating or a review. If you do that, I'll reward you with a free 20 minute free coaching session on crafting your journey to your best self. Reach out to me at lois at loiskofi.com to claim your 20 minute slot. Until next time, be healthy, wealthy, and wise.